So please bear with me. Um, usually when I'm reading from a script, I'm in a press box and no one knows. So uh, everyone can see me do it this time. So I, I apologize in advance for my looking down. Um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am your master of ceremonies this evening. My name is Sean King, and I am proud to be the Assistant Director of Athletics for Communications and Chair of the Hall of Fame Committee at Allegheny College. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the 2021, and you too, Allegheny College Athletic Hall of Fame induction ceremony. For those of you who are returning, whether it be after a day or several years, welcome back. To those of you who have never been here before, welcome. Before we begin, if you'd join me in thanking our Director of Catering, Tony Pollock, and our entire staff from Parkhurst Dining Services for a wonderful dinner this evening. Thank you. We would also like to extend our warmest appreciation to Lynn McManus Harlan, our Director of Conference and Events Services, the ever-present Deb Simmons, Technical Director Heather Curtis, and the staff of the Allegheny Physical Plant who helped with our preparations. Also to Dr. Gabrielle Morrow and the Allegheny College Health Agency, thank you for your guidance through the pandemic and working with us to make this event a reality. Tonight we will honor and hear from some of the best student athletes and coaches to don the blue and gold while representing Allegheny College. All conference, all region, and all America honors abound this evening, plus a national championship winning relay team. While two of the most successful coaches the college has seen will take their places in the Hall of Fame. We invite you to sit back and enjoy tonight's ceremony. To our inductees, enjoy the evening. You've earned this opportunity. At this time, I'd like to introduce our Allegheny College Director of Athletics and Recreation, Bill Ross. Good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for uh, making the effort to come here and, and honor the inductees tonight. Uh, we are especially thankful for the opportunity to be able to hold this event uh, outdoors. As we all know, Meadville weather isn't always the most predictable, um, but tonight we certainly were delivered with uh, some wonderful weather and uh, can't be happier to be outside and sharing this evening with you. Um, I have a few induct or, uh, introductions to, to, to make and keeping an Allegheny tradition. And I, I guess I'll circle back here 26 years ago now, uh, when I attended my very first Hall of Fame banquet. And I remember that I was sitting oh, back there somewhere, and the athletic director at the time, Rick Crehan, was sitting somewhere right over here. And I got to sit here tonight. Rick, where, where are you? <laughs> oh, okay. So full circle, I guess, I don't know. I, uh, again, I told his wife, I said, if everything goes wrong, it's his fault because he hired me. Okay, so uh, in keeping with tradition, um, I want to introduce our inductees um, from classes past. From the class of 1988, and I ask you to please stand so you can be recognized. From the class of 1988 induction, Chuck Slater. From the class of 1989, Mark Matlack. Also from the induction class from 1989, Robin Small. From the induction class from 1991, Kay Gold. And from the induction class from 1992, the one and only Norm Sundstrom. From the class of 2003, Derek Owens. From the class of 2004, 
from the 2007 induction class, Joe Musgrove. From 2008, Jamie Gang. From 2009, Maureen Hager. From the induction class 2017, Coach Mike Ferris. And from 2018, the one and only Jamie Plunkett. I also want to thank the Hall of Fame committee, which Sean chairs. Um, from that committee, we have Maureen Hager in attendance, um, and also um, in attendance from the Hall of Fame committee, Jamie Plunkett and Mandy Prussia. I think Mandy's in the back there somewhere. I also have a list of distinguished guests that I'd like to recognize. Uh, first and foremost, I want to be able to uh, make sure that we give a nice round of applause for President Hillary Link. Our Vice President for uh, Advancement, Matt Stinson. Our Vice President of Finance, Linda Wetzel. From the Board of Trustees, we have John Kutz. And Kurt Kramer. And without further ado, I want to introduce to you President of Allegheny College, Hillary Link. Oh, no, I'm not supposed to introduce Hillary Link yet. I'm supposed to introduce, reintroduce Sean King. I'm sorry. It's the first, last, and only time I'll ever be mistaken for a college president, so I'm going to. I'm going to bask in this one for a second. Um. <laughs> Let's get on with the, uh, the reason we're all here this evening. Our first inductee was a nine-time All-American in the pool for the Gators, qualifying for the NCAA Division III Swimming and Diving Championships in three years and leading the Gators to three top 14 finishes as a team. In total, she competed in 16 events at the National Championships, nine as an individual, and seven relays. She catapulted onto the scene as a freshman in 1993, earning five All-America honors and competing in seven total events. In 1994, she posted her highest individual finish, placing sixth in the 400 individual medley. Her senior year of 1996 brought six more events at nationals and two All-America finishes. A three-time Alden Scholar, in the classroom, she was named Allegheny's recipient of the North Coast Athletic Conference Senior Scholar Athlete of the Year Award. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Allegheny class of 1996, Amy Sakunas Bowler. Good evening. Um, my kids were remarking on my hair. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> um, well, good evening. I am the lucky one that gets to start things off this evening. Um, I used to be an S, so I was kind of back in the pack, but now I'm married to a B, so uh, here we go. <laughs> um, I wasn't sure exactly what I should talk about tonight after 25 years but I thought I would just start with expressing gratitude. Uh, I wanted to uh, say I'm thankful for being recognized tonight um, and to be able to celebrate this milestone in person. Um, I think it's great that the college was able to pull this off, so thank you. Um, I wanted to thank my husband and 
and our children who were able to be here to support me. Um, and also my parents, my mom and dad are here. Um, and I think this is really the culmination of uh, all the time spent driving me to swimming practices, sometimes two practices a day, um, hanging out at swim meets all weekend, waiting for me to race, driving to Allegheny to watch me swim, um, flying to Atlanta, to Emory University to watch me swim at nationals. Um, they were always there for me, and I appreciate your constant support, so thank you. I also wanted to thank Coach Erdos. Um, he was really just an amazing coach and kind of a, a dad to me here at Allegheny. Um, I also, I almost gave up swimming after my junior year. It wasn't my best year, <laughs> but um, Coach pushed me to stick it out. Um, and even when I was student teaching my senior year at Conneaut Lake High School, I couldn't make the practices with the rest of the team. So he would let me come in whenever I could and he'd sit there and watch me swim um, by myself. <laughs> um, and he really pushed me and I, I really appreciate it. Um, that year I made it back to nationals and I was named the scholar athlete of the year. So um, I really appreciate his support and his encouragement. So thanks, coach. <laughs> um, practicing alone my senior year was really hard, and uh, nothing makes you appreciate your teammates more than practicing all by yourself in the pool. So I really want to thank my teammates, too. Uh, they were really my family here at Allegheny. Um, a memory from Nationals that I wanted to share really had nothing to do with the pool, but um, when we were in Atlanta, there was a snowstorm. It was a big snowstorm for Atlanta. They had like an inch of snow. <laughs> and our team got stuck on the elevator at our hotel when we were going back for finals. And an entire maintenance team had to come and free us. And they could not believe that we got on an elevator in a snowstorm. <laughs> um, and clearly they didn't know where we were from because when we left Allegheny, I think there were like two feet of snow on the ground. Um, also another memory again, from swimming but not really in the pool was getting to train in Puerto Rico. Um, every year we would go for winter training and we trained at the Albergue Olimpico which was the Puerto Rican um, Olympic Training Center which sounds fancy but it was um, basically bunks and a pool and a weight room and a cafeteria and we basically swam and swam and swam um, all day but um, it was awesome. It was an awesome experience and a lot of fun. And we got to come back to Allegheny in January with a tan. So that was pretty cool. Um, I really appreciate having attended Allegheny. Um, I really wasn't supposed to come to college here. I had accepted a swimming scholarship to Bucknell. And um, I had my dorm assignment, my class schedule. I had the sticker on my car. And they changed my financial aid package at the very last minute. And so we had some reevaluating to do, and I had loved Allegheny, so I called and I asked if they could still take me. And uh, as luck would have it, there were four openings. So I signed up. <laughs> I pulled that Bucknell sticker off my car, and <laughs> this is where I ended up. And really, um, you know, it was a it was a blessing in disguise because um, Allegheny afforded me the opportunity to be an athlete, to be a student to be part of a sorority, um, and just to do a variety of things that I may not have gotten to do if I was um, hindered by a scholarship that was just focused on swimming. Um, and even after I was named um, to the Hall of Fame group for 2021, many um, former classmates reached out to me, and some of them didn't even remember that I was a swimmer. And I think that's pretty cool, actually, because I just, you know, it was such a wonderful experience to be here and you got to meet so many different people from different groups. Um, and it was just a, an awesome experience that really helped me to be um, successful going forward in life. So thank you to Allegheny. Um, thank you for this honor. Um, I appreciate it. Thanks.
when I initially reached out to Amy to, to tell her that she was being inducted into the Hall of Fame, she said, uh, we're at Disney, can I talk to you next week? <laughs> so, I, I need no more than five minutes, I promise it'll be quick. We were on the phone for about 63 seconds. <laughs> Thank you. Next, we have the winningest coach in Allegheny men's basketball history, totaling 184 wins in 13 seasons at the helm, coaching from 1989 to 2002. He passed his predecessor, John Reinders, for most career wins in his final season and finished his time on the sideline in Meadville with a winning percentage of 541, thanks in part to 107 North Coast Athletic Conference wins. The 1995-96 season saw the Gators improve by 10 wins from the previous year. And this individual was selected as the NCAC's Coach of the Year, and his team featured the NCAC Player of the Year in David Masciola. Boy, do I hope I said that right. Perfect. He led the Gators to their most recent NCAC crown when Allegheny defeated Worcester 66-64 in the 1998 NCAC Championship game which marked the last victory over the Fighting Scots for the blue and gold for more than 8,000 days until Allegheny once again won in Timpkin Gymnasium on January 29th, 2020. <laughs> Following the 1998 NCAC title, Allegheny went on to post a 97-88 win over Baldwin Wallace in the opening round of the NCAA Division III Men's Basketball Championship. And ideally, this person's current school will post a win over Baldwin Wallace tomorrow on the gridiron. He once again led the Gators to the NCAC postseason following the 1998-99 season, which marks the last time Allegheny competed in the national tournament field. Under his tutelage, Allegheny earned a share of the 1993 NCAC regular season title, which signifies the last time an Allegheny men's basketball team was able to accomplish that feat. In his time patrolling the sidelines, he mentored 27 total All-NCAC selections, including five first team, eight second team, and 14 honorable mention picks. Ladies and gentlemen, a Hall of Fame coach and fisherman, Phil Ness. Wow, pretty cool. You know, uh, Dr. Link, Bill, Sean, committee, it's amazing. You think about it, and you think about a school that's a charter member of the NCAA, and you're part of the history of this institution now. Um, I'd like to congratulate my classmates. Your careers are special. And what you accomplished really enhances this tremendous group. You're, you're just incredible people, incredible athletes. Um, I was here when you were and watched just fantastic. Thinking about this over time, I, I got a chance to reflect about my career at Allegheny. And the, the first day I'm on the job, Joyce Gianni comes into my office and goes, Governor Schaefer's on the phone for you. Oh, what? Why? I didn't know Governor Schaefer was a Allegheny grad, NCAA Hall. I didn't know that until we talked. And he said, Phil, we expect big things from you. <laughs> Holy crap. Talk about no small pressure. Um, but it was heady times. Um, my interview here lasted about eh, two days. I got on a plane in Erie in a snowstorm, in an ice out. It took probably nine hours to get home. I walked in the door, and as many of you know, I do enjoy a lager, 
now and again. Katie hadn't even had a chance to open the beer when the phone rang, and it was Coach Sundstrom. And Coach said, is Coach there? Katie put her hand over the speaker. It had a wire on it. <laughs> and said, take it. We're moving up in the alphabet. I was at Brown. We're going to Allegheny. <laughs> It was the best decision we ever could make. Talk about an incredible institution. Talk about one of America's great hometowns. And for 25 years, this is home. This is our home. Uh, talk about being a fisherman, Sean. My ashes are going to get scattered on French Creek. That's where it is. The other part of it is when you are a coach, you don't do it by yourself. The colleagues that I had in our athletic department were incredible. Coach, we were talking earlier, I think there are nine coaches that work for you that are in the Hall of Fame. And the, the culture that you created for us to work together, to work hard, to push each other to be great, you just couldn't ask for more. And I think that trickled down to our student athletes. Um, it, it was really, really cool. And then the fact that we were part of the faculty and we went to faculty meetings and we were engaged across the campus. The, the camaraderie and the culture was special. Um, I hope Division Three can find that again because I don't think it's here right now. And I'm not talking about Allegheny, but I think across all of Division Three, It's important to remember that coaches are educators and that we have a special place on campus. Um, the other thing, early on in my career, I got to meet the Frank Fuhrer from Fuhrer Field. And Frank doesn't mince words very often. And he said, Phil, I don't, well, I can't say exactly what Frank said. <laughs> But the gist of it was, I don't care what you run, it's not about X's and O's, it's about Jimmy's and Joe's. And we were blessed with incredible players, incredible kids with great talent, with great commitment. Um, yeah, I'm looking back here, I got three law degrees, one AD, four law degrees, vice presidents, the best plumbing company in Erie. Um, you, you can't not have great players and be successful. And you guys just did so, so very much. Um, the last thing is you need, you, you need a special partner, and I have one, and that's Katie. And that is my best recruiting job ever. <laughs> Way above my grade. Way above my grade. And we love Allegheny. We love Meadville. Um, it's, it's really, really a special place. Um, Rhonda, I do owe you an apology. You made four million I beat the coach buttons in our first four years coaching together for summer camp. I, you probably still have nightmares about it. Big Park, you follow me. So I'm going to be careful here. But I want to say you're a special man. And I appreciated coaching you. And what you brought to our team was special. Um, the last thing I'm going to say is to young Miss Parada. Your dad was a special man. And I listened to the letter that he wrote to you at his funeral. You'll be a great gator. All hail, Allegheny Yonder on the Hill. Thank you, Coach Ness. That was that was terrific.
Um, as uh, the introduction for our next Hall of Famer was already begun by Coach Ness, uh, our third inductee became one of the top multi-sport athletes for the Gators during his time in blue and gold, earning All-America honors on the gridiron as an offensive lineman, winning an individual conference championship in track and field, and competing for two seasons on the men's basketball team. He is most recognized for his status as an All-American, earning a pair of honors in 1995 from the American Football Coaches Association and the Football Gazette. That season, he claimed his second All-NCAC honor as well. A member of the NCAC's All-Decade team, he earned two conference championships and was a three-year letter winner. Additionally, he was named the football team's most valuable player as a senior and was chosen as the Allegheny Male Athlete of the Year for 1995-96. In track and field, he competed for three seasons, placing sixth in the discus at the 1994 NCAC Outdoor Championships before returning to win the event as a junior in 1995. In addition, he also competed his final two seasons as a member of the men's basketball team, helping the Gators to 24 wins while playing for the man you just heard from, Phil Ness. The most impressive part to me during this whole process about this inductee was a after, after speaking to him and letting him know that he was being inducted into the Hall of Fame, he was more concerned about, he, he went and rattled off a list of teammates. What about this person, this person, this person, this person they should be into? And it was unbelievable. Just, just told Anson Park that he was being inducted into the Hall of Fame and he was, he was concerned about friends and teammates and uh, was, was talking about their accomplishments. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the best in the trenches to ever suit up for the Gators, Anson Park. Good evening, everybody. So, following Coach Ness. <laughs> uh, first, I want to say thank you, Lord, for blessing me to be here today. And uh, really, it's, it's truly a blessing because I got to see my father and my family. I haven't seen them in a year because of COVID. So I'm really, really, really thankful that I'm here. I get to see my parents, get to see my son for the first time, um, and then my daughter and so on. So. I know you're going to make some noise, so I appreciate everybody bearing with my kids, you know, so I'm very, very appreciative of that. Um, <clears throat> coming to Allegheny first started because my, my high school coach uh, was really one that pushed me to come to the school, coming from D.C., and, and uh, he, he felt this was a place because my high school career, we didn't win very much, and I hate losing more than I love winning. Uh, and when each, when in 2000, 2000, they won a national championship. They were like, not 2000, sorry, 90, 1990, 90 they won, sorry. Um, they won a championship and coach was like, yeah, this may be a good spot for you um, and to start off. And so I came and uh, from D.C. to Meadville, Pennsylvania. <laughs> very, very different. Very, very different. <laughs> very, very different. Um, but I was blessed. I truly was because I met people that are still in my life today that are not just friends, it's truly family. Um, you know, and that, with that being the case, you know, I definitely want to thank all my coaches, uh, you know, starting off with Coach O'Keefe, Coach Philbin, Coach Leepheimer, Coach Marska, Coach, especially Coach Nagy, because I know he was one of the reasons probably he was an advocate for me here. Um, you know, I'm looking forward to him getting us back to our prideful winning days. Uh, yeah, because nothing worse than hearing we losing to frickin' Denison, <laughs> Ohio Wesley, I mean, it's just, it's, um, yeah, if we lost two games, it was a bad season for us. You didn't lose here. We're, our commitment to winning, and I carry this in my professional career with Coach O'Keefe when he said, never apologize to winning. Never apologize. So, yeah, when we beat Team 77 to nothing, we were prideful in that. And, that, I mean, our practices were harder than games. And, but Coach O'Keefe drove that in us. And, you know, I'm, I'm grateful for that because actually in my professional career, 
same mentality. We don't lose, we win. We drive, we drive, we drive. Um, so I'm very thankful for that. And I'm special thanks to Coach Ness, because uh, Coach Ness got the answer that probably shouldn't have played basketball, you know, because I was in my online days. So I, instead of being around 250, I was like 280, 290. And uh, big difference getting up and down the court and getting up in the air like I used to be when I was a little bit lighter. But I uh, enjoyed it tremendously playing basketball for Coach Ness. Um, you know, one thing about Coach Ness, I mean, he gave me not only advice about being a better athlete, but also being a better student and life further, you know, uh, and, and continue to grow and prosper to be a, a good man. Um, and I was like, actually, that's from all my coaches. I would definitely say that. So I just want to say, you know, thank you for that. Um, my Allegheny family, one thing I really appreciate of being from D.C., my parents couldn't always make the trip up to watch my games. Um, but never at one, one game did I miss not having someone there to say, answer good job after the game or, or whatever. So I love, you know, Recognition all of them, but I really want to recognize the Fars, the Dawsons, the Summers. There's, I mean, every game, I always had someone who would come and say, answer, good job, and talk to me, no matter where my family was. And that's truly a blessing. You can't get that everywhere. So I'm very, 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 very thankful for that. Um, <clears throat> you know, last but not least, uh, you know, I want to thank my wife, you know, because when I did get the call, you know, again, I was, as I said, I was. I'm still concerned. I'm still an advocate because I will be back when I see Marvin Farr go in. I want to see Willie Green go in. I want to see, yeah, I still got a lot more that, that coming in here. Uh, Brian Adams, uh, you know, we, we have some players here. In our years, man, we won. You know, that, that's one thing about when we, the pride that we had about playing ball here. You know, we were D3, but we thought we can whip some D1 teams. Um, you know, we, that's, that's how we practice and that we play. I mean, really excited. I also want to, you know, I want to, I'm going to celebrate folks that came to, came all the way because we drove a little distance to get here. My cousin's Joe came from D.C. with me. My friends from Akron, Dale, Mike, Greg, you know, Summers from Cleveland Heights, you know, and my bonus, you know, have, I've also been adopted by a lot of families. So Anson Park's going in, but that park has an asterisk. You got the Dawsons, you got the Fars, you got the Summers. I mean, again, a lot of people have, has helped me be where I'm at. And I'm so forever grateful. I'm so ever humble and I'm so thankful. And then lastly, my mother passed in 2014, but I know for sure she would be the one to be very, very excited for this part. Because not only did she, but my dad, my stepmom, they showed me sacrifice. That the work you gotta put in always to drive to get something. And they, they allowed me to play the sports consistently because of all the sacrifice they would do for, for me to get here. So I can't thank y'all enough. Again, I'm so happy that y'all are here and uh, to share this moment and I appreciate it. Thank you. And let's get back to winning. One thing that has been consistent in my four years at Allegheny College have been people talking about great people from the past that, that have made an impact on them, made an impact on other people at Allegheny. And one name that has come up time and time and time and time again is our next inductee. Um, just. I'm, I'm, I'm sad for everyone in this room who didn't get a chance to meet Mike for not having that chance because I, I'm sad that I didn't have that chance. Um, and just a, a terrific person from all indications and I am uh, really excited to, to share some of these accomplishments. Our fourth Hall of Famer was an electrifying second baseman on some of the most successful baseball teams in Allegheny history. As a senior in 1997, he helped the Gators to a school record 40 wins, a mark which still stands today, along with both an NCAC regular season and tournament championship and birth in the NCAA Division III Mideast Regional Field. He did his part, ranking second in Division III in stolen bases and runs scored that season, swiping 42 bags and crossing home plate 75 times. 
He capped his career in Meadville with a senior season that saw him put up incredible numbers that can be found in your program. For his stellar performance, he earned second team All-America honors from the American Baseball Coaches Association. In two seasons as a starter, the Gators collected 76 wins, the best two-year span in program history. His 75 runs and 21 hit by pitches from 1997 still top the Allegheny single season record books. The baseball team's best person teammate of the year award is, is, is named after this person. And from the class of 1997, Mike Parada is being inducted posthumously, having passed away in 2008 following a courageous battle with Lou Gehrig's disease. Here to represent her father and speak on behalf is his daughter, Jaden Parada. Thank you, Coach Crean and Coach Ferris, and all of the Gator baseball team for this recognition of my father. Hello, my name is Jaden Parada. I am so proud to accept this award from my father, Michael Parada. As many of you know, my dad lost his battle to ALS, and many people know this is Lou Gehrig's disease, but not before he could leave his mark on the world. Although I was only about 17 months old when he passed, I grew up learning all about my dad. My favorite stories to listen to are all of the baseball ones, especially the ones involving the team. From his early morning baseball practices in the parking lots to the long bus rides up from the games. My father had a passion for helping people. So before he passed, he and my mother decided to set up the Michael Parada Foundation to help all other families affected by Lou Gehrig's disease. Thank you so much for this award and letting me and my family know that even though he may be gone from the world, he's never truly forgotten. Thank you. Thank you, Jaden. I figure that if Coach Ness could, could still be heard from the microphone, I probably don't need to, to lean over either, but here we are. Our fifth honoree this evening was a dominating force on the soccer pitch for the Gators in the 1990s, claiming All-America honors from the National Soccer Coaches Association of America as a senior in 1994 and earning All-Region honors in both 93 and 94. She also secured a pair of all North Coast Athletic Conference awards for her career, garnering first team recognition in 1993 and second team laurels in 1994. As a team captain and senior in 1994, this Hall of Famer led the Gators to 11 wins, the most for the program in five years. A four-year starter, she split time between the midfield and defense and finished her career with 26 points, scoring seven goals and adding 12 helpers. An Allegheny graduate of the class of 1995, please join me in congratulating Lisa DeLuca Postal. Okay, I, like Amy, my kids were horrified by the picture. I have three daughters, they were like, is that really gonna be up there? Um, 
So first, I want to um, thank Dr. Link and the committee for um, just putting this on tonight and for us all being able to be here. Um, also want to thank the other people that are being inducted. It is a great honor to stand among the people that are here today. I um, want to thank my husband, who was also an uh, Allegheny grad, uh, also captain of the men's soccer team. And a funny story about that, we probably would never have met, even though we both played soccer. Um, Allegheny, at the time, I guess, thought it would be a good idea to cut the budget for soccer at the time. And they decided it would be a good idea to have the men's and women's team travel on away trips together. So um, that's how I met my husband. And <laughs> the rest is history. Um, so I, I wouldn't encourage that, but and I think there's actually two other couples that are married still today, soccer couples. So, um, so I want to thank him for just his constant encouragement. And um, we were married here at the chapel. And um, so Allegheny has a very special place for both of us here. Um, I have one daughter here today. My youngest is here, Addie. We keep telling her this is what the weather is like every day at Allegheny. So come six years from now, she could enjoy this all the time. Um, so thanks, Addie, for coming. My uh, middle daughter, Mia, is a senior. We live in Charlotte. She is the cheer captain of her uh, cheerleading team. They have a huge game tonight, and my husband and I are sitting over there like, oh, my God, we left her home alone. <laughs> So if you see us on our phones tonight, we're just checking in to make sure everything is okay there. Um, our oldest daughter is a sophomore at Notre Dame. And uh, I knew this was a big deal for her. She is our only child who actually played soccer. Um, and for her to say, she, she really wanted to be here. There's really no direct way to get here from South Bend, Indiana to Meadville without going through Charlotte and coming back. So. I was like, it's okay. But I knew it was a big deal for her when she said, Mom, first let me check to see if Notre Dame plays at home. And then I could be there. And they don't play at home, but it just didn't quite work out. But I knew if I came in second to Notre Dame football, I was pretty, it was still pretty cool to be their mom, right? Um, next, I want to thank my parents who are here today. They have been at every soccer game as long as I can remember. Um, my sister played here also, and I had cousins that played here. Um, and my parents have been at every game. They have sat through the snow, the rain, the sleet, the hail, whatever else Allegheny would bring. They sat through it, so they are here tonight. So I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, I just want to thank my teammates. Uh, we came in with a very large group of girls trying out. There were 30-some girls that tried out for the soccer team as freshmen, so it was great. They were able to make a JV team, and as seniors, there were about 15 of us, 12 to 15 of us left on that team. So we had a huge group, and I couldn't be here without them. And lastly, um, I want to thank Coach Wilshire. Coach Wilshire passed away in the spring, and I know he would have been just thrilled to be able to be here. So um, he was a coach. He started the men's and women's soccer at Mount Lebanon in Pittsburgh. Um, and then he came here to Allegheny to start the women's soccer team. Um, so we owe him a lot for the people that played soccer here. Um, he was a, uh, a teacher. He had me for math, and thank goodness, because I'm not a math person, so <laughs> I was glad that he was there. Um, he just was a, a father figure to all the girls that were on the team. So in closing, I'd just like you to take a moment to think of those coaches that really made a difference, um, and Coach Wilshire was that person for me, and just to remember them and to thank them and to be grateful for the help that they gave us. So thank you. Seems like a really good time to break from the script ever so slightly and ask that if 
any of our current coaches at Allegheny College, uh, would you mind standing up for a second? I'd like to be like to recognize you for what you do for our student athletes and, and program coach Simmons, coach, coach Nagel, coach Crum, coach Muffley, coach Maurer, coach Lindsay, coach Nagy. And we can't forget about Coach Ross, leading, leading the coach of the coaches. Our sixth inductee this evening established himself as one of the top baseball players in the President's Athletic Conference during his time at Allegheny. A four-year starter behind the plate for the Gators and team captain as a senior, he was selected to the All-PAC First Team in his final three seasons of 1979, 80, and 81. As a sophomore in 1979, he batted 422, including a blistering league-leading 500 in PAC play. Over his career, Allegheny won 42 games, and this honoree batted 314 with five doubles, 33 walks, 26 RBIs, and a 935 fielding percentage. In conference action, his numbers increased to a 407 average and a 909 on-base plus slugging percentage. It is my pleasure to introduce, from the class of 1981, and fellow Pittsburgh Pirates fan, John Ruggieri. Thank you, whoever barked that out because I, I, I needed that. <laughs> I, I've heard a number of folks come to the podium and uh, I've always been decent with small group uh, uh, talks, but as I told my family, large groups, eh, not so much, but so if that was Kutz or Burkhardt, whoever, Eddie, whoever barked that out, <laughs> I was perlick in the back. Well, if I could read, <laughs> they do my goggles. There we go. Thank you, Bill. That's a great start. <laughs> good evening to every. Whoop, let me break this thing. Is that good? Can you hear me in the back? Good evening to everybody, and what a thrill it is to be here with all of you. To Allegheny College the administration, the faculty, the Hall of Fame committee, and all associated with the college, many thanks for having me here tonight. To my family, John, Crystal, Tim, Polly, Tracy, and Madison, and all the friends who have traveled the many distances to be here tonight for this awesome weekend, I am most gracious. A most sincere thanks to all. As well, congratulations to the fellow inductees and their families and friends. I've given a good bit of th thought on this writing, and my mind has told me several different approaches. Do I maintain a degree of sincerity? Do I take a more jovial approach? Do I blend the concepts? Many ideas, but in keeping with uh, Associate AD Mr. King's thoughts when first we spoke, I can tell you this. He advised that individuals are typically asked to give a brief talk at this ceremony, <laughs> maintaining a five-minute time allotment. I was told I had five seconds. 
folks, again, I want to say how thrilled I am to be standing here with all of you. It is such an honor to have been inducted into the Allegheny College Sports Blue and Gold Hall of Fame. The achievement is one that I have dreamed about for many years. Those who know me well can attest that I've always thought it would be so cool to be a part of this very prestigious group. And here I am before you. Unbelievable stuff. Words cannot express the gratitude for the so many involved. Allegheny College, Meadville, Pennsylvania. Where is that? <laughs> I'll never forget making the college tours with mom and dad. The Gators had the best ball diamond and without comparison. Yes, my college decision fell as much on the ball diamond as any other factor. <laughs> I had some of my very best years of my life at Allegheny. It was a challenging academic adventure, and baseball was such an integral part. So much fun with school, friends, sports, and a very special time for me. Being a member of the Gator Nine meant the world to me. I remember my freshman year. The team met in the field house for winter workouts. While it was spring in the eyes of many across this vast country, but March in Meadville, Pennsylvania meant some 10 inches of snow at times. Yes, we fielded rubber-coated baseballs under coach Bob Garbark. His baseball knowledge simply off the charts. And I, and I suppose, coming from a man who donned the uniform at the Major League Baseball level for five or six years, that should come as no shock. By the way, he was a catcher. <laughs> Speaking of the catching position, prior to heading to Meadville, I'd played the game since eh, turning eight. Position-wise, I did like so many. Some pitching, some shortstop, eh, a little bit of catching. I asked my father, what position do I say I play? My dad said, tell Garby you will play anywhere they need you. Very sound advice. That first year, we made the spring trip. Coach Matlack in the rear, who I ran into this evening earlier, was a senior that year. I was a little peon freshman. That was, by the way, that was off script, so did I do okay? <laughs> we had on the trip to the south in our team vans. The very first game we played, the spring of 1978, for those trying to do a little math on these, uh, these, these years, was in Charleston, South Carolina, and versus the Citadel. My first game as a Gator, and I've actually shown my son the field. He resides today in Charleston, South Carolina. I was in the opening lineup as catcher. I had no clue. Holy smokes. Me? <laughs> in the lineup? <laughs> I was a tad bit nervous. I've never been a personal stats guy. I went to the field to have fun and enjoy the game. As long as the team prevailed, I was all good. My brotherhood 
would inquire and often attended the games up at Robertson Field. Many of those gentlemen are with us here tonight. Along the spectator lines, seems appropriate at this stage to salute two very special people in my life, my mother and my father. Known to many as Ma and Pa Roach, they were so instrumental in providing not only the ability to play the game, but set me on the core values of life. I am so blessed to have had such an awesome mother and father who did their utmost to guide me and prepare me for my days ahead. Both would be thrilled to be here and would have loved being here at this gathering. They often staged trips to catch the weekend doubleheaders and watch the team traveling to both Mudville and the away games in the conference. I'd like to quickly mention two individuals who impacted me in my love for the game. Mr. Kent Hooker, who taught me so much about the game, the very ins and outs of the game. A wonderful man and an awesome family. Secondly, Mr. Ken Whitey Sorgel. Whitey was on a baseball diamond every night. Managing, umpiring, or simply watching the local youth. We had a chance to visit regularly when I was catching and he was calling balls and strikes. A marvelous man and a wonderful family. I've spoken beyond my limit. How are we doing? Are we at that six minute or 5.30? Or... <laughs> Before I depart, however, there are two very special people that I'd love to recognize this evening. My son, John, Amos, Rogeri, and my daughter, Crystal, Pistol. Without the two of them, I would not be where I am this evening with all of you. They are both very, very extraordinary young people, and I am most privileged to be their father. You guys coming in all the way from your respective spots, Charleston, South Carolina, and Simi Valley, California, means the absolute world to me. I cannot thank you enough for traveling the distance that you have to see Dad for this very special evening. Love you both with all my heart. Folks, I'm very blessed. Love to all, safe travels, stay healthy, and be safe. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Ruggieri was just kidding. It never snows in Meadville. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Our final individual began her tenure at Allegheny as head coach of the women's volleyball program and an assistant women's basketball coach and finished her time as the women's basketball head coach with a winning percentage of nearly 700. After three years coaching women's volleyball, she left the college for two years. However, in 1986, she took over as the head coach of the women's basketball program and saw immediate success. In her first three years at the helm, Allegheny won the North Coast Athletic Conference Championship and made appearances in the NCAA Division III Women's Basketball Championship field. 
the 25 wins from the 1986-87 campaign still stand as the second most in a single season for the program. During the 1987-88 year, this coach mentored the NCAC Player of the Year in Suzanne Helfont and later went on to earn NCAC Coach of the Year honors following the 88-89 season. All told, she finished her time as the women's basketball coach at Allegheny with a career record of 110 wins and 49 losses, a winning percentage of 692, and coached 23 all NCAC honorees, seven on the first team, six second team, and 10 honorable mention. Please join me in congratulating 2021 Allegheny College Hall of Fame inductee, Rhonda Seagraves. Like some of the other ladies have mentioned, uh, my, my uh, picture, uh, thanks to my husband, he has shared that with my children, and I'm already getting comments. So, uh, I, I think this was taken the year I was hired, which was about 40 years ago. So, uh, 30 years ago, I moved to Texas. I have not embraced spicy food. I hate jalapenos, but I have adopted y'all. I am going to try to speak without y'all, but I don't know that that'll happen. So first of all, I want to thank uh, my fellow inductees. I am humbled to be in this class. Um, question sometime whether or not that was the right decision when I see uh, all the accomplishments that you've all made. So uh, congratulations to the college, uh, President Link, Bill, Sean, thank you. I understand what it takes to make this happen. Um, Hall of Fame committee, I understand what that takes to happen too. And so I appreciate that. I, I do have some special thanks I have to make. Uh, as I mentioned 40 years ago, Norm Sundstrom and Coach Kay Gould took a chance on somebody who I hadn't even walked across the stage to get my degree yet, and they offered me a position. And it was the best decision I have made. Uh, coach Gould, I consider her my coaching mentor. And, uh, I, you know, just I'm following somebody who's that accomplished, and I was just very, very grateful for that. And so, Kay, thank you. Norm, not only... 40 years ago, did you make the decision to hire myself? You also made the wise decision, in my mind, to hire an assistant swimming coach. And uh, we just celebrated our 39th anniversary together, so did my husband. Thank you. Um, to the student athletes that I coach, oh my gosh, that's why you do it. Those of you that are coaching, you know that. You get up every morning because those are the people you serve. And that's really, really special to me. I have a couple of extra guests with me tonight. Um, I'm currently the athletic director at Concordia University in Austin, Texas. And I have my boss, Provost Dr. Christy Kirk, that made the trip. I have a fellow VP with me, uh, Dr. Jenny L. Strother, who is a former coach yourself and understands what this means, but they made the trip from Texas. I tell them I think it's because it's 30 degrees cooler here, uh, 35 degrees cooler here now. Uh, so um, thank you so much. I, I appreciate that. That shows you the support that I'm getting even now, and I really appreciate it. I asked a friend of mine who recently got inducted into another Hall of Fame, and I said, so why did you pick that story? Why did you, she goes, well, here's the deal. I had so many stories, I had to pick the one that made the biggest difference to me. So I wanna go back to 1991. Some of you weren't around then, but uh, I was coaching 
and we were playing Oberlin College. Oberlin College was not very good. Right, Kay? Right? We didn't really have to prepare a whole lot. Well, uh, to Oberlin's credit, the summer before that, they had received a, a transfer that was a Division I player who decided she wanted to go home and be closer to her family. She was from Oberlin, Ohio. So we've got this player. Her name is Ann Gilbert. Trust me, I remember her name. So we're playing and, and getting ready to, you know, play this team. And they had won 15 games. They hadn't won 15 games in the history of women's basketball there. So, you know, to Kay's credit, you prepare. We watched film. We wa looked at stat sheets. We called other coaches. How is this team that's never been successful being successful with this, with this one player? And so here's my bright idea. When you look at film, they're double and triple teaming this young woman. And what she's done is she's not only averaging high 20s in points, she's averaging probably about 15 assists a game, which means she's making the people around her that much better. My idea was there is no way one person can beat a team of five. So here's the game plan. We are only going to guard her with one of our players. You're not getting any help. We're going to guard the other four because one player is not going to beat us. So they score 64. We score 99, something like that. So we win by 30. The rest of the story is, is that Ann Gilbert had 61 <laughs> of the 64 points. You laugh, but we won by 30 points. <laughs> um, Sheila Lingenfelder, who's also in the Hall of Fame, is not here tonight, was my assistant. And even in the game, she's like, do you, do you think we ought to make a change? Like, maybe adjust a little bit? And I'm like, Sheila. It's working. We're winning. So we win by 30 points. Go forward another month and a half, and I'm at the National Basketball Women's Basketball Coaches Association, and every coach in America is there. And you have a big banquet. So I'm sitting at a table with some of my coaching colleagues and, and friends, and they get up and they announce the All-American team, top 10 players in the nation, and who's on that team? Ann Gilbert. And so my coaching friends are like, well, you played against her. Is she any good? I'm like, yeah, you know, she's good. Yeah, yeah, she deserves to be up there. Yeah, she's good. Well, how did you do against her? We won by 30 points. <laughs> so to top it all off, the next introduction they make is we would like to announce a national player of the year Ann Gilbert, who scored 61 points <laughs> against Allegheny College. I went from 5'10 to about 2 feet 6, so I could fit under the table at that point, and everyone's going, I've got, we won by 30 points. So my apologies, Kay. I apologize to you and all the other coaches in the room because I didn't make the adjustment. That was my learning point, because what I learned is my job was really not to make somebody else an All-American. I was really to make my own team All-Americans with that. Uh, so I thank Allegheny for this honor. I thank you for the learning experiences that you gave me, and congratulations to all my other recipients here. Thank you. We have a special guest here tonight, Ann Gilbert, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I get paid per laugh, so if we could just keep that up. The 2011 Men's Distance Medley Relay Team enters the Hall of Fame in its first year of eligibility. 
10 years removed from its national championship as just the third by a team in school history joining the 1990 football team and the 1983 men's golf team. Mike Vla, Taylor Throckmorton, Andrew Mahone, and Tony Dupre entered the 2011 NCAA Division III Indoor Track and Field Championships with the sixth fastest time in the country in the event. However, the Gators were able to capitalize on their focus on the event and bring home the crown. Allegheny had the edge because despite having a lower seed time, it didn't have another event to pull the focus away from focus and energy of its competitors as the same as the other teams did. That sounded a lot better when I wrote it. <laughs> the Gator foursome ended up earning the win by one full second over third seeded Wisconsin Oshkosh by posting a time of 10 minutes and 12 one hundredths of a second. That foursome hit the NCAA Division III automatic qualifying time of 9.59 flat by running a 9.57.42 at the 2011 Boston University Valentine Invitational, an event that featured four of the top six times in Division III that year. Speaking on behalf today of the 2011 DMR is Tony Dupre. Thanks, everybody. Um, you know, it, one, it's just an honor. I feel like uh, Andrew and Taylor and Mike, you guys should be up here with me because this is something we did together. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't be standing up here. There we go. There. <laughs> Thanks for the suggestion, Tony. Oh, you're welcome. Um, <laughs> So, you know, when, when these guys ask me to be the one to, to talk, I, you know, I, I feel truly blessed and honored to, to be up here tonight. Um, first of all, just want to thank, uh, you know, some folks that, that were real supportive during that journey. It was great to see some of them tonight. I mean, uh, Coach Brenton Wilkerson, who was our coach at the time, and uh, Coach Jason Hedman. Um, coach... Bill Ross, who, you know, was, was our coach uh, up until our, well, my last year for this relay team, and then when he started that path down the, the athletic directorship role. Um, you know, when I was thinking about what I wanted to share about our relay, um, you know, these, these guys behind me, um, we were such a unique group of guys, <laughs> um, and yet, you know, with the relay, the fact that we were able to just kind of come together um, and really I think what, what drove us uh, was the fact that we, we were part of a tradition at Allegheny and the cross country and track team that uh, during our time here was just driven to just one up and just be successful and be part of a tradition. And, you know, I, I remember my first year even being here and there was just talk of, you know, running at the national meet, uh, whether that be in cross country or track. And that, that drive to continue to just be successful and put our names uh, in the record books and to be part of, you know, this tradition that you just kind of felt a part of um, was, was just a, a wonderful experience. Um, and, you know, there was, there was a lot of ups and downs with that. Um, you know, we, we had had a relay team that two years prior to the year that uh, we won the, the national meet uh, had qualified as well for the, for the national meet. Uh, Taylor was on that team with me. And, you know, we were running at the national meet and uh, someone hit Taylor, the baton went flying, and we ended up finishing dead last, like not even close. Um, and, you know, the, the resiliency, the chance that we got to kind of represent um, our school and our team um, and to, to be down in Columbus and to do that uh, was, was a memory that will always stay with me. Um, but I think just to wrap it up, just to maybe highlight what that, you know, th these guys meant um, was 
as was mentioned in the introduction, you, you had to qualify for the national meet based on a standard. And so we went up to this meet in Boston um, and we were talking about this right before even this evening for dinner. Um, you know, we, we had had another person uh, who was going to be uh, on the relay that day um, and he had warmed up with us and, we was, and he said about 20 minutes before the race, like, I can't run. I think I have a stress fracture. Um, and so fortunately, Mike had, uh, you know, warmed up with us and was, was there and, you know, he jumped in and we uh, ended up running in a, in a heat that day uh, that was the, the slower of the two heats. I mean, we really had no business doing what we did. Um, but each of these guys, you know, just kind of didn't let any of those externals get in the way. Um, we each did our part uh, and, you know, we got to represent our school as a result of it. Um, so very grateful for Allegheny, very grateful to all the nominees tonight. Thank you so much for letting us be part of your, your class. We're humbled um, and it's just a, a wonderful honor. Um, and thank you to you guys too. So with that, thanks. One, one thing that uh, Tony and Taylor and I kind of talked about this, Tony was going to fail to mention was that Tony probably could have won the mile by himself this year. So the fact that he decided to run with the distance medley relay team, not to say that he put us all on his back, but uh, <laughs> it kind of did. Yeah. So. <laughs> Tony was the star of the team, but really it's, it goes beyond that. The entire culture of uh, determination and hard work from the men's cross country and uh, track and field teams from that era. I mean, we got Ben Maurer, who was a senior and was one of the captains that we looked up to and idolized during that time. Um, the inspiration that they gave us to do what we did uh, really Anything that we accomplished was because of the precedent that was set by the people that came before us and the, and the tradition at Allegheny and the excellence that they inspired in us. And uh, I think that that, you know, that was really just uh, you know, what, what helped us to do what we did. So really, I don't see it as our success, but as the entire program success for that era uh, during that time that we were there. So, and big thanks to Tony for being so selfless and uh, really uh, yeah, blessing us with this, with this amazing <laughs> honor. So, you know, thank you guys, and uh, hopefully you all have a wonderful night. Thank you to all of our inductees for wonderful speeches this evening. At this time, I'd li I would like to invite to the podium the 22nd president of Allegheny College, Dr. Hillary L. Link, to say a few words and handle the official Hall of Fame proclamation for our 39th Athletic Hall of Fame class. Thank you, Sean. Congratulations to all of you, and thank you all for being here. I am truly thrilled to be here. We did not get to do this last year. Uh, we did this two years ago, and I had first arrived as president, and pretty much everything since has been really hard. Um, so nights like this are a great reminder, I think, for me and for so many of us, how special it is to, I, we don't no longer take for granted the opportunity to be together in person, to have families reunite, and to be able to celebrate each other. Um, obviously, I just wanna quickly thank again all of the people who put so much work and effort into making this happen. Um, this is, um, as you can imagine, putting together an event of this magnitude under what continue to be really challenging and uncertain circumstances is yet another example of how the Allegheny community always gives their all and goes above and beyond in everything that we've been trying to do. 
So um, I just want to recognize all the hard work that's gone into that. Um, and we wouldn't be together here in person, even though the mosquitoes are taking advantage of us, if so many people had not dedicated themselves every day for the past 18 months to support our faculty and our students to create safe protocols to keep the institution open safely and moving forward in the right direction. Um, so if, for those of you sticking around during the weekend, you see any of our faculty or our staff or our coaches or our students or anyone else, take a moment and thank them because this was a true team effort to get Allegheny through the past year and through this year as well. Um, having our athletic facilities buzzing this fall, seeing our athletes give their all on the court, on the field, seeing our stands packed yet again with enthusiastic Gator supporters is a reminder to me of why Allegheny is so special. And I want to say tonight is a true reminder of why Allegheny is so special. These have been two really bizarre years to be the president of an institution. But when I hear the stories of how important the work that you all did on the field and on the court and the roles that your mentors and coaches and your teammates have played, it's just a really, remind, a really important reminder of how important this institution is to those of us who are connected to it and what it gives to our students and what it has given to our students for the past 206 years. Allegheny Athletics have been top-notch in the past because of many of the people we celebrated tonight and so many of their teammates and others. You all, our inductees, inspire our current athletes every day with your renowned dedication, your legacies, your ongoing ties to the college. My pledge to all of you, and I'm looking at Anson in particular because he kind of threw down the challenge and I heard it. My pledge to all of you is that we will return to glory and to making Allegheny Athletics the best they can be again on our way, in, as our way of honoring the big footsteps that you all have left and the examples that you all set. Um, many of the people in this room know I am a very competitive and very driven person, and I promise you that this institution will be great again, known nationally for everything that we do, both in the classroom and in the athletic realm. Um, I also want to say, since you commented that coming to, to Meadville from DC was quite a shock, many of you, I don't know how many of you know my story, I came to Meadville from Rome, Italy. Um, so talk about culture shock. <laughs> It still sometimes shocks me when I wake up and I think, whoa, how, how did that happen? Um, so this evening we've, had, we've heard wonderful, wonderful stories from Gators of the past spanning more than five decades. And we hope that all of their messages in, continue to inspire Gators for five more decades and beyond. So go Gators. Um, and at this time, I'm going to ask that each of our honorees for the evening, including all four members of the DMR, please come forward and face the crowd for the official enshrinement declaration. Okay, here we go. Are you all ready? Be it known that on this, the 24th of September in the year 2021, we are gathered in the city of Meadville, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, to enshrine Amy Sakunis Bowler, Phil Ness, Anson Park, Mike Parada, 
Lisa DeLuca Postal, John Ruggieri, Rhonda Seagraves, and the 2011 Distance Medley Relay of Throckmorton, Vla, Dupre, and Mahone into the Allegheny College Athletic Hall of Fame. This action publicly proclaims those principles and values inherent in and enriched by the Allegheny experience as exemplified in the lives and careers of the aforesaid individuals. They, by this election, bring honor, not only to themselves, but also to, the, to their alma mater as well. May their accomplishments here recognized serve as a lasting challenge for future generations to discover the best that lies within their hearts and minds and through disciplined pursuit achieve excellence of the highest order. I hereby declare that these individuals are now enshrined as members of the Allegheny College Athletic Hall of Fame. As our inductees return to their seats, that's your cue to return to your seats, I would like to turn the microphone over to our wonderful MC, Sean King, for some final housekeeping items. Just what everyone wanted to hear is more of me. But um, thank you, Dr. Link. Um, a few housekeeping items. Um, we ask that all award winners, including all four members of the DMR, uh, not that I think you need reminded to stick around for photos, but uh, please remain after for photographs by a Hall of Famer of his own rights, Mr. Ed Mallard. Legitimately, he is in several Halls of Fame. Uh, also, if you could please return your name badge tags and holders to uh, just, you could take the, the name itself out, but the holders, uh, there's a box underneath the food tent over there um, so we can reduce waste and reuse them this weekend. Um, appreciate that. Um, we hope to see everyone at the Robertson Athletic Complex tomorrow. We have athletic action beginning at 11 a.m. with our tennis teams hosting Mount Union, our field hockey team hosting Wittenberg at 11 a.m., and kickoff of the football game against Ohio Wesleyan is set for 2 p.m. And the moment you've all been waiting for is, this concludes tonight's ceremony. Thank you for attending, and congratulations once again to our Hall of Fame class of 2021. <laughs>